this time I'm going to do 2013 question one. So it's like tonight I, I just did the whole exam. But anyways, let's start. So it's a three period, I mean, a three M period bargaining game. So player one is offering twice and then player two is offering once. So the first thing obviously is to draw the diagram. I mean, draw the tree. So player one is offering first and then let's call it offer x1 then player two is accepting or rejecting if it's accepted as usual we have x1 and one minus x1 if it's, if it's rejected then player one is offering again so this is the main difference and suppose the offer is x2 then i can accept and i can reject as well so say x2 one minus x2 no that's not right we have a discount factor so so delta times one x2 and delta times one minus x2 if it's rejected then now it's the first time that player two is proposing which is cool and uh, I ex a player one now gets to accept or reject so if it's accepted i get delta this is x3 delta squared delta squared one minus x3 if i got rejected i should get zero zero so to make it just, I, I, I know that you can solve this. I will solve the more general one. So I will solve it like this. So delta three, one minus three n. And by the way, this is the method how you solve the three n period game. So how I did this, what is this here? This is the SPE from the three n period game. So the thing is that we don't know what the, the, this is, but we just write it as a number. So suppose the SPE is this, it's the SPE payoff, not the SPE. Um, then what happens is this should have been another thing like accept, reject, and go on for three M period. But then we know that in any bargaining game, the first offer will be accepted. So we know that the game will actually end here. But we, what we don't know is what will be the proposal here, and let's just call it 3n. So that's all we did here. So, so if we have this, then we can go back to do back reduction again. So I will, wrote, I will write a very short version. You should write more on the exam. So here, player one is making decision I should accept if this number is larger than this number, so delta two x three is larger than or equal to delta three x three n. So going back, the two should make an offer like this. So I should propose w three. I mean not w. That's the wage gain. So x three is equal to exactly this boundary one. And so it's delta x three n. So going back, player two is making accept or reject thing. Again, so I will accept if this number is larger than this number, and let's write it down. So if this number is larger than or equal to delta square one minus x three, x three we solved it already. So substituting here delta three n, and go back again. So one, what should I propose? I should propose when this thing holds with equality. So x two is equal to this stuff. 1 minus um, delta 1 minus delta x3. So moving back up, 2 is accepting or rejecting. I should accept if um, this is 2. So this one is larger than this one. So 1 minus x1 is larger than or equal to delta 1 minus x2. No, x2 we solved it already. So we, we have this thing. So 1 minus delta this. this nothing I do already. Uh, so propose x1 equal to 1 minus that. We should simplify this on the round. So this cancels out. So this becomes a squared. And let's move it outside. So plus delta to the power of 3, 3 and x. I mean, x3n. So now we copy this thing. And then we, we, we solve this recursive relation. So paste it. So what, what this really is, 
is that 3n three, three plus 3. So we have other three new periods. So this is the one that's here, period 1, 2, and go back a bit, 3. So we added three periods. So we know that 3n plus 3 period x is equal to this thing. So the problem now becomes how to solve this. So the the very easy way is we know what x3 is, so we know that it's th this. So we then we can calculate x6, right? So it's just 1 plus substitute this in, 3, 1 minus this. So we can simplify it, plus 3 minus 5. And similarly, we can get x9, so it will become hard, but we can see the pattern now, I think. So this is 3 to the power, so 6 minus delta to the power 8. So then we can guess a pattern, right? So 3k, mm, maybe it's kind of hard to guess, but it's this thing. So sum delta to the power 3n n is equal to starting from 0, yes, to k minus 1. So then I think you can see that we are going to use induction on this. So I, I guess I should probably not do it. So what we do is just we substitute this expression in here, and then we check whether the expression for 3n plus 3 is something that looks similar, and it, it will be. So we basically, we substitute in, so we get this thing. Yeah, I think it's easy to compute. So we want it to be something like this, plus delta. I mean, this. Oh, there's a k. Yeah, so we want it to be n equal to, zero to k delta 3n. So if that works, then by induction, the formula works. Uh, so the other one that I mentioned in the review session that I never did, that I did last year but no one understood, was something like this. So we have a sequence like this. So this sequence should have a generating function. So the generating function is something like this, 3n, and multiply by, you no, know, the, the notation is very bad, so let's call it y, multiply by this to the power of 3n. Maybe we should just use n, n is good enough, so n is equal to 0 to infinity, and, and, and that's called a generating function. Then the next thing is we substitute this thing in here, so we get, so we get this basically is another function of this. Then we can solve for yeah, so if you are from computer science, you, you know what I'm talking about. If you are not, you do have no idea what this is, so don't worry about it. Um, and then we can solve for this, then we can do the Taylor expansion of this. And then the, the coefficient of this Taylor expansion, remember, is like this. So we know that the x3n has a formula that's equal to the Taylor expansion of this generating function.